Hey, 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 my people, finally, don't finally happen to, as I they talk to you now, information has it that um, Ifunam Dekano, the leader of IPOB, does not renounce Biafra, that they are not going to release him. This was said on Arise TV News when one Yoruba man came in for an interview and um, an analyst of Arise News TV. I go one make on a watch this video, make on a see waiting they happen now. Hey, hey, hey. This one, Igore, do make one tell me on her own opinion on this matter. Let's watch this video together and drop your share. Discuss this request by Namdi Kanu's family to Southeast governors as well as how to break the log jam arising from his prolonged trial. Good afternoon, Mr. Shabwali. Thank you for being here. Good afternoon. Mr. It's a pleasure to be here. See you. Now, this plea is, it doesn't seem like it's far fetched. He's been in detention for about three years. Um, what, what do you make of it? Is it time for an intervention of the Southeast governors in this case? Well, I think uh, the call of the Southeast governors is misdirected. Get me? An affair to the governors. You see, there is a. I will start with a quotation from Henry V. You know, Shakespeare, one of Shakespeare's plays. He said that if a child that is by the father sent on merchandise went and miscarried upon the seas, is it the fault of the father? This plea is being made by the junior brother of Kanu. He can speak to his brother. Let me to renounce his session. I'm sure we will work out a free man the next day to call on the governor. So I elected representatives of Southeast and who know what is on the ground. He's turning a political matter into a sociological and family matter. It is not. It is already a legal issue. And the last ruling by the court was that the, the, the lower court should accelerate hearing on his case. He was freed before, although while in detention, he fled to Kenya. He was retrieved from there, and his trial went on. If his health is not OK, that is the fault of the people. He cannot, he should not die on account of ill health in government's custody. You get me? Because people are contesting the legality of that custody. This is in court. I don't want to comment on something in court. But you see, um, it is a fear, again, for them to call on the Southeast governors. Because you put them in a cul-de-sac of sorts, a knowing situation. Like I said the other time, uh, blood is thicker than water. There's no doubt that it goes generally have empathy, sympathy for him. But it is a path they had followed before and which they regretted. You get me? Although the government was magnanimous enough to accommodate the leader of rebellion then, Udimogu Ojuku. And ever since we've moved on, our motto is unity in diversity. And the core matter of uh, disgruntlement in this arrangement is discrimination, not South discrimination. We all suffered it. When I was, in, when I, okay, I started out as a civil servant, then I went into the bank. You see, in the bank, when government took over banks, they would just send Northerners who never met you in the university as executive directors, whereas you are planning, you know, sliding up. Even my mates who remained in the public service, only one got to be from the South. You get me? Only one got to be deputy permanent secretary, as the Lajola is there now. So we have all suffered on account of this North-South something. But that's the essence of our unity in diversity. That's why they created uh, so many bodies, JAM, um, federal character, so that there will be some balance. And we are managing it. We are managing it. What we should adopt, I think I've said it here too, is what they are using in the US now, although to, to, to settle matters on racism, that's diversity, inclusion, and equity. If you include more people, if you reduce the gap between the rich and the poor, if you enhance, expand access to, to riches for more people, we can balance things out, but not to declare 
a session and you know, wanting to be pardoned and then implicating governors who had no hand in the matter, putting it on their table. It's, it's unfair to them. It's unfair to them. I know the situation the governors have been placed. Let me give you an analogy. When Dia, the deputy to Abacha, was accused of treasonable fellow, they brought you Rubabas and showed them film, show implication. The Abu Jale of you know, uh, Jabo, they said, well, we have seen your film, but it's our son, which means you cannot, you cannot, you cannot give approval for you to, to kill our son. And he was not killed. They want to put the governors in this same situation. But let Kanu, I say it again, renounce the session. Even if he knows his health cannot take it, eh, he, should, he doesn't need to die over the matter. Eh, the Ubos are Nigerians. Whether anybody likes it or not. And sooner than later, Adigo will be president in this country. It's just a matter of time. So there is no need for any rebellion. And there is no need to implicate four governors in a matter that should not really concern them, since it is in the court. Right. And, and truly, this matter does you know, seem to be passed from one office to the next, uh, you know, in these pleas uh, mm -hmm. of uh, trying to, uh, to, 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 to get him to regain his freedom. I read an interesting commentary this morning where the writer was saying that, well, the current president should toe the way of the late president, Yara Dua, and just put an amnesty on the issue so that we can move on from it. What are your thoughts on that way of handling uh, cases concerning agitators, especially, uh, you know, w w with the issues of secession and so you forth? Have to treat them in context. You see, the one you mentioned, Yaradwa, it's like, you know, you're about to say you use a thief to catch a thief. Get me? That was a form of compensation, even though it was an amnesty. See, the riverland areas are still suffering. You get me? From pollution and so many things involved in exploration of usage of oil. And that's the area that lays the, gold, the goose, that lays the golden egg. So that was done there. There was amnesty. And that was even why they were using those who were militants before as security people to secure the creeks so that the oil can flow. You see that context? Uh, you cannot apply that context to this. Because even in the first rebellion, by Ujuku, like I said, it was accommodated. It was accommodated and brought back and rehabilitated. And this, and even this has moved on then. It's like bringing back ba bad memories to say this. Because we are advancing. You see our elections, uh, you, see, you saw how OB emerged. Yeah, you know, even if you do it was at the last minute. And you see what is happening uh, all over the country. We are learning to manage our diversity. And I, do, I don't think violent challenge of constituted authority should be condoned. Although I'm not president, the work mm -hmm. stops <laughs> on the table of the president. So amnesty is off, off, the, off the charts for yes. you? Unless, of course, the president wants it. <laughs> uh, Disclaimer. The cost, oh, oh. Well, Mr. Shibuel, I know you rightly pointed out that the, it's unfair to involve the Southeast governors, you know, making a political matter rather soci sociological, I believe that those yes. were your words. Yes. But the, um, seeing that, for instance, the stay at home um, or sit at home order is one that affected the Southeast governors, there are fears that, you know, the continued detention could actually continue to inflame tensions in the region. So do you think that they should play some kind of role, seeing that they are, have been affected by his detention one way or another, should they play some playing, role? They are playing the correct in role. This. They are fighting it. They are asking people to come out. They, you know, and they are asking people to come out. But like I said, I said blood is thicker than water. You see, you, you may not necessarily come out to say you support something. Huh? Uh, tacitly or spoken way, you get me? People know where their sympathies lie, but it's not the sympathy that they can manifest openly. And these governors are doing their best. They are forcing, they are almost forcing people to come out. In some areas, they are successful. In some areas, they are not. 
So it is, they are using their uh, constitutional cloud. That is the formal might of demanding detention. Get me? And you see, he said the other time that if you just snap his finger like this, that would be the end of the matter. But he doesn't need to snap his finger. Let him renounce the session today. I'm sure he'll be out of prison tomorrow. And, and it's so, interesting that you say that, because in the video we, we've been playing of him, he's saying, you know, once he's released, uh, you know, all the insecurity in, in the region will be gone in two, two minutes, two That's minutes. Right. But, but, you know, you, you, earlier you mentioned the political cost of, of an amnesty, but let's look at some of the potential benefits of, uh, of, of his release. Uh, and some people are even comparing it. I know every case is different and individual, but people are saying, well, if Sunday Boho can be uh, freed and if... Uh, um, so worry can also be forgiven uh, for 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 his uh, cases that he had withstanding. Um, th then surely there must be some benefit to extend an olive, olive branch since this case has been going on for so long. I'm a Yoruba man. Ugo is not in the same class as Kanu to the Yoruba. I don't even know Ugo, the governor. Uh, see, they are paper tigers. The same thing this other man you mentioned. So He's right. an act activist. A human rights activist. That, mean, that is his way of life. And he knows he must have, if you do some things, you have clashes with the law. And people like that invariably have a coterie of lawyers supporting them. You get me? Because they know they are fighting for society, not for themselves. You cannot put Kano in that category. He has an organized IPOB. You know what that crony, that, crony, that, that crony, what it means? It's a challenge to the legitimacy of the Nigerian government. Let him go back on that, he'll be a free man. It's so simple. Or you don't think so? Oh, I think if it <laughs> were that, that simple, is, we would have seen The ball is in the court of Mr. President. Ah, and the courts. Huh? And the courts. We'd like to thank you. For so, my people, that is the end of the video right there. Hmm. Um, this man may be speaking the mind of the government without your knowledge. You, I think that this statement should be taken serious. It should not be um, underrated or taken for granted. I think that this is the plan of the federal government of Nigeria. Something has to be done and done very quickly. <laughs> um, the Southeast governors, like the uh, brother to Mazenam the Kano have said, needs to wage into this matter for proper and a um, very efficient, um, uh, constructive dialogue that we set things on the right path. If not, <laughs> there may be problems, my people. So let me know what you think about it. And don't also forget to drop your comment and share this video because a lot of people are not aware of this development. You know that the title of this uh, particular video from Arise News TV is saying that uh, Mazen Namdekano's brother calls for his um, uh, the intervention of the Southeast governor. So uh, some people may not know that such big information is inside this particular video. That is why you need to share it and uh, let others hear what is going on and what is happening in Nigeria right now. This is a very serious case that needs very urgent attention. If these people want Mazen Namdekano to drop his agitation for freedom, did they ask Ibuhu or, um, or Momo Yele Showare to do the same? Or when it comes to Igbo people, the game is always different. That is what Nigeria is telling us. Whenever it concerns Igbo people, yeah, they begin to change the matter. Uh, Sunday Ibuhu did not um, drop his Duduwa agitation before he was released. Momo Yele Showare did not denounce revolution now before he was released. And the charges are all the same, treasonable felony against all of them. So why is this man still in detention? That is a very big question that needs um, an answer. So Ibos, over to you. Let us know your opinion on this matter um, and what you have to say. Please share this video and make it go viral. It is quite unfortunate that things has gone this bad in Nigeria. I'll see you people on the next one. Thank you. As you share, God bless you. Bye-bye.